Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top five reasons why your gas range won't start. Stick around to the end of the video for some important safety tips that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the gas valve at the wall. The first thing we're going to check is the oven igniter. It lights the gas in the oven. The most common type of oven igniter is the glow bar type with either a round or square body. It has a ceramic body with an element that glows hot to ignite the gas. They usually have a cage to protect the element as it's very fragile and breaks easily. They're usually mounted on the bake or broil oven burners. If your gas range won't start, it could be that the oven igniter has failed. To get to the igniter, you'll have to open the oven door, remove the racks, the oven bottom, and the flame spreader. You'll first want to look at the igniter to make sure it hasn't come loose and it's mounted properly. If it isn't, it may not ignite the gas. If you notice that the igniter is glowing, but isn't glowing white hot, that means it's getting too weak to open the gas safety valve and it'll have to be replaced. If the oven igniter isn't glowing at all, you can test it for continuity. In order to see if the part can carry an electric current, we have to test it with a multimeter set to continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. Some igniter wiring harnesses can be reached from inside the oven, but if the harness is too short to pull out and unplug, you'll have to go around to the back of the oven to access it. Unplug the igniter's wiring and touch a probe to each terminal. It should have continuity. If it doesn't, it'll have to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to AppliancePartsPros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Next we're going to check the spark module. It creates the spark to ignite the gas for the stove top burners. Spark modules usually have a plastic body with two terminals for the incoming power and an outgoing power terminal for each igniter. Spark modules are usually located under the cooktop or in the back of the range, either in the console or behind the rear access panel. If your gas range stovetop burners won't start, the spark module may have failed. Once you have access to the module, remove the incoming power wires you can usually spot the difference between them and the igniter wires. Then we can test them with a the multimeter set to volts AC. Once you have the meter set, attach the test probes to the terminals. And turn all the burner knobs to the light position. Then carefully plug the range back in, but leave the gas off. The meter should read approximately 120 volts. If you're getting voltage to the module, but none of the igniter sparked during normal operation, then the coil inside the spark module has failed and it'll have to be replaced. Now we can look at the top burner igniter. It ignites the gas on the cooktop. There have been many different designs of top burner igniters made over the years. They have a metal rod to carry the spark, ceramic insulators, a wire terminal, and a mounting bracket. The top burner igniters are mounted on or near the burner heads on the cooktop. If you hear the igniters clicking, but the stove top burners on your gas range won't start, it could be that the top burner igniter has failed. The fact that the igniters are clicking usually means that the spark module and switches are okay. In most cases, the burner head and igniter just need to be clean. You want to make sure that all the gas ports are clean, especially the ones by the igniter, as these let the gas out to be ignited. Make sure the igniter tip is clean, as well as the area right in front of the igniter tip on the burner head. If it's rusted or dirty, the spark may not jump across. If everything looks clean, take the igniter out to inspect it. Depending upon your range, you may be able to remove the burner head, but on most, you'll have to lift up the cooktop to access the igniters. If there are any cracks in the ceramic or missing pieces, it could let the spark jump to the oven body instead of the burner head. Whatever style you have, Check the ceramic and the wire or terminal for damage. If the igniter is damaged in any way, it'll have to be replaced. Now we can check the oven temperature sensor. It tells the control board the temperature in the oven. Oven temperature sensors are a type of resistor in which the ohms reading will change as the temperature does. 
They're usually a small metal rod with a mounting plate and two wires. Oven temperature sensors are usually mounted in the upper left or right corner of the oven, but in order to test it, you'll have to go around to the back of the range. If the oven temperature sensor has failed, your gas range won't start. The most common sensors should read around 1080 ohms at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If you aren't sure, you can always look at the tech sheet for your range. The sensor can fail in two ways. If the ohms reading is off, it could cause the oven temperature to be different than what you selected. Or if it's totally failed and you don't get a reading at all, then the range won't start. So set your meter to ohms. Our meter automatically detects whatever ohms are coming in, but you may need to set your meter to read the proper ohm level. Once you have access to the sensor, remove the wires and touch a test probe to each terminal. If the ohms reading is way off or you don't get a reading at all, it'll have to be replaced. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Last thing to check is the oven control board. It controls the functions of the range. The oven control board is usually a computer board. It collects all the data from the sensors and switches and controls the functions of the range. It's usually mounted in the middle of the control panel on the range. If the oven control board has failed, your gas range won't start. There are a lot of different control boards out there, so we can't show you how to test them all. You're going to have to grab your tech sheet and follow the diagnostics or error codes to see if it's gone bad. If it fails the test, it'll have to be replaced. Now here are those safety tips we mentioned earlier. A lot of people are still using aluminum foil to protect their ranges from spills and grease buildup. Although it may seem like a good idea, you may not be aware of the dangers it can pose. Firefighters respond to over 170,000 kitchen fires per year, and failing to keep the range clean is linked to more than 13,000 of those. On electric cooktops, many people cover the drip pans with foil so they don't have to clean them, but this can cause moisture retention, making them rust even faster. It can also block airflow, reflect heat back into the elements damaging them, or if the foil touches the element, it could be a shock hazard or start a fire. On gas cooktops, wrapping the grates, burner heads, or drip pans in foil can cause heat retention, carbon monoxide poisoning, as well as starting a fire. In general, you'll want to avoid lining the oven with foil because it could block air passages, causing heat buildup that causes poor cooking and increases the dangers of a fire. If the foil gets too hot, it could melt, damaging the oven lining or starting a fire. With electric ovens, putting foil under the element could cause heat to be reflected back into the oven overcooking the food and possibly damaging the element. If the foil touches the element, it could become a shock hazard. In gas ovens, blocking air passages could affect the burner operation, causing poor cooking and carbon monoxide poisoning. You also don't want to completely cover an oven rack, as this will disrupt the airflow and cause cooking problems. You should only use a small pan on a rack several inches below the food you're cooking to catch drips. Due to these dangers, you don't want to use aluminum foil to try to keep the range clean. You should clean the oven and underneath the cooktop regularly to prevent grease buildup. So keep the foil off the range, keep it clean, and keep an eye on it while you're cooking. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the appliance in and turn the gas back on. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.